Hello and welcome. My name is Bulko and today we are going to play a very cool game that has recently come to 1.0 full release. Keeper RL or Keeper Roguelike. We are going to start a new game, not in the tutorial. And this is sort of a Dungeon Keeper Roguelike kind of game. I mean, the, the title sort of gives it away. We're going to start a new game and we shall be called... Bulko, because that is how we we do things. Um, we have some options. We can go for like the classic keeper experience, where we can be a wizard or a knight. Uh, we could go for being a knight that is sort of less evil. We could go full lich, and and definitely be uh, the undead. There's automatons. There's dwarves. We could be actual roguelike mode and wander the land but for today and for this video we are going to just make a standard wizard so welcome to campaign mode the world which you see below is made up of smaller maps you will build your base on one of them there are hostile and friendly tribes around you you have to conquer all villains marked as main to win the game you can travel to other sites by creating a team and using the travel command the highlighted tribes are in your influence zone, which means you can currently interact with them. Trade, recruit, attack, or be attacked. As you conquer more en enemies, your influence zone will increase. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we're in the grasslands. I think we want to have our home biome somewhere in the mountains. Oh, those are ally gnomes. That's fun. So we have some warriors that are more powerful we have a cottage with like a hag it looks like in there we'll just be over here um there's a lesser villain the dryads have arrows they might be a little tricky but for now we'll set our home site maybe right centrally right there confirm and we begin initializing game Welcome to Keeper RL 1.0. Yeah, this was just released. Huge milestone. Lots of cool stuff. So we're going to pause the game. We are going to control our friendly keeper. And we're just going to kind of click around. So I can already see in the map there's some question mark things happening. And I can explore a little. And uh, we're going to go down this way. And excellent. I think that's good enough. I've explored enough. We're going to exit that mode. Press D for dig. We're going to make a system. We're going to go, whoops, whoops, all the way here. We'll dig out some rocks. Go, my minions. It is time. Excellent. And I always like to do a little little five by five. Another little five by five. <clears throat> and then a nice sort of big room right at right in the entrance way. <clears throat> so what I do here is I like to create a stockpile for resources a nice and near the entrance. All right, we have recruits already. We're going to speed up the time here so my, my imps can get to work and we can start doing important tasks. This absolutely is a very cool game. I haven't played it too much. I played it enough to sort of know the controls, know the basics. But there's going to be a lot of learning still. I'm definitely not an expert. So if you've played the game many a times, you might be able to tell me something in the comments. Uh, otherwise, if you are brand new and you've never seen this game before, um, I do play a decent amount of RimWorld on the channel, other RPGs and things. And uh, there might be some, some interest in, in some of my regular viewers, but this is a very fun game and it's pretty cool. So we have resource storage. I throw that in there and then I like to do some equipment 
right next door. And I usually sort of make this like a workshop. So for now, we'll just throw a couple of workbenches in there and then they can put the resources here, craft things, put it there, people will equip it, and it's all good. Now down in this little area, I'm gonna pause for a moment. We'll do a bit of a, a little training area. We're gonna put some torches in the corners of every room. And if you double click, when you place a torch, it will change which corner it goes on. There we go, and that will light things up nicely. <clears throat> Morale affects minion productivity. They have these little bubbles on them. These imps aren't really doing anything right now. Um, I don't know why this is resource. Is it because it's not inside? Is, is that a thing? Well, let's make some gates. Come, my minions. It's time for you to be productive. Okay, you've decided you're going to haul all the dirt. Or the, 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 the stuff. Alright, we got this sort of natural expansion based on where minerals are. And we need to make some bedrooms so we can start recruiting all these wonderful things. So we have quite a few friends, companions, minions that we can get. But some of these ones might go away, unfortunately, unless I make beds rather quickly. So we can ideally start throwing down a string of beds. And this is going to become some sort of awkward dormitory. You can always build up walls later. Nice. Excellent. I need a bed. Make the bed. I want this warrior. He shall be mine. Thank you. Yes, yes, we cannot. Ooh, permanent trait aggravates enemies and he's vulnerable to magic. No, we don't want that. So there is fun traits here that you can get for your little minions. We could make... I guess... Soft rock, I guess that's what this stuff is. So we could kind of reconstruct some walls if we decided we don't love the way things are set out here, which... I don't love, I just really wanted to be able to recruit some people right away. I don't particularly love the way this bedroom is set up. However, it's not the worst. So we're going to open things up. How far are we? This is a five deep. So we'll go five deep again. And then we'll kind of continue on. I mean, if we wanted to kind of do more of what we're already doing, we would go five deep. And uh, this is hard rock, so we could go kind of rebuild the hard rock. And then orders, we could remove some construction. Oh, yes, middle mouse expands the map. If uh, that was a concern you had. Uh, let's get living beds. We'll do that for now. We also need significantly more stuff. For now, we'll do this. So we'll make a little room that way we'll do that as well we'll have a double gap here we'll just make a whole bunch of rooms right off the main the main drag for now this one will be slightly different shape because we want to get all those rocks 
maybe we'll make it like a long skinny room with like a little cross in the middle just to add some variety i do like interconnectedness sometimes maybe we're gonna put some dormitories more down here um we have an artificer well let's take an artificer and then what we can do We'll get our artificer just creating a bunch of stuff. Let's maybe take one one less glove. We'll make four of everything for now. And get a few warriors. And we can go adventuring. Conquer the realm. Beautiful. So we have all these artificers we have a library we could make now i'm not sure exactly how the like the best uh placement of things is but i'm just gonna be creative make it look kind of cool and we'll go from there so i love how our little keeper wanders around and slaps our little minions gets them into shape and telling me I should place some torches to kind of spruce things up a bit which is not a terrible idea I also like making one of these little spy balls put them outside here and they will uh, keep an eye out literally for enemies now in terms of living uh, hay pile I think is for feeding it says uh, for, to eat for non-humans um, we could put some tables in here let our people have a have a place to eat we need some more torches that so will continue to sort of light up the space put some some hall torches That, that'll light things up nicely. Kind of periodically throughout the dungeon. We have this insane artificer, but it gets plus 20 to forging. I don't know if we need an insane artificer. So we will leave him for now. Look at all this stuff. So we have all this stuff we are making, and uh, that seems good. Another insane artificer. Once again, torches are recommended. Light things up. You'll notice it kind of like gets rid of the fog of war a little bit, which is uh, which is nice. Let's see. Uh, let's just see things in the dungeon. There's some water here, which could be problematic in terms of our expansion, but not not to worry. We will simply not dig out that way and we can always fill the water in if if we need to beautiful all right so our imps are happily dancing around um we could make a print well we need iron uh which we do not have um we could make we made some bookshelves we can't really make anything else too fancy <clears throat> i think we need uh, okay, so a stable for keeping horses. We could make a stable. Um, where do we want the stable? Do we want to make a stable like off of the training room, like right near the entrance? I feel like that's a good spot for a stable. So maybe we'll do like a long, skinny stable. That seems fine have that the horse is right near the front uh just maybe just a regular goblin warrior or do we want to wait for like fancy units so there is some pros and cons for doing that and it says to conquer enemy tribes oh i do need actual warriors i currently have a single warrior and he's mostly just hanging out all right let's get some doors so we're gonna make a couple of doors Doors, doors, doors everywhere. Let's just close it all in for now. And uh, send them out here. 
clear cut the forest. Go, my minions. Do your worst. Ah, poetry table. I like. Let's do some some poems. There we go. We have a swimming goblin. That's what we need. We can make like the the navy seals of goblins. Um. All right. Let's just make this the stables. I don't know how many tiles you need. I could probably be reading more. What does it does it say? Just an area for keeping horses and other mounts. Sure. Volko writes a vulgar haiku. And a vulgar limerick. Excellent. I love how the... I believe... Has he equipped... Yes. He has equipped the vulgar haiku and the limerick. So you can use these terrible poems as a consumable. It gives a minus three defense penalty to anyone who hears my vulgar haiku. Um, and as well as my limerick, which is amazing. I love... I love it. So I have the ability to, uh, okay, we are vulnerable to magic. We don't care about that. We don't, we don't like that. And we have our little, little stable down here. I wonder, could we simply, within the stable itself, can I just go like, here's some hay for the creatures of the stable. Not that I have any, but like, will that sustain them? Who knows? All right, we're working hard. Um, sure, let's make a hand torch and just more things. Beautiful. Uh, library has enough stuff. We're not gonna worry about floors or anything for now. Structures, we could go downwards. Maybe look for some things. Um, so we, have a, we could get a fountain. Nice luxurious fountain. I love it. We could... Uh, this is... Produces improved leather and would must be placed near an enchanting pool. I Okay, I don't have that. Um, we can make a guard area. I just make like... This is the guard area. Guards can hang out near the, the things. Seems good. And, okay, let's look. Oh, we want some treasure chests and some armor racks and things. Okay, so all your armor can be stored here. All right, so let's build an armor rack. That seems good. Um, neat. Storage. Uh, I guess like a weapon rack as well. Storage. A bow rack? And then storage. We do like a scroll shelf. And then we can put the poems down here. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to put this down here. Maybe. Oh, yeah. We're, it looks like we're loading loading things up. Oh yeah, it says uh, all the equipment that's inside. So we got some clubs in there, we got some armor and stuff. I don't have any bows yet. <clears throat> Neat. So yeah, the management aspects of the game are pretty straightforward. It's pretty minimal. It is a little bit more like, you know, ar arcade almost. We'll get a little shaman going. He can be part of the team. So the shaman... What... what kind of things are you going to get? You have a heal. Fully rematerializes a spirit. So it's not just any old heal. It's like a spirit heal, which is cool. A goblin priest, which I think has healing of, of actual battlers, which is neat. And uh, so we have a couple warriors. We have a couple, uh, we have a healer. We have, uh, some other things going on. So our base is looking pretty good. I think what we could try to do now, um, I don't know so much about this guard zone. 
What if I get rid of it for now? We'll, we'll do something about that later. Now, <clears throat> I can't actually make a prison. I can make a gallows and I can make a beast cage. Did I put some beast cages like in our stables? Is that is that a thing? Or should I just make some beast cages up here? Oh, we have a Naga spirit. We've materialized a spirit as well as a donkey. Okay, those seem really like this seems very cool. <clears throat> it's immune to acid. It's flying. It's vulnerable to magic. All right. Oh, plus five damage when drunk. All right, well, we need more beds. So, can we just like really just pack them in? Oh my goodness, look at all these spirits we're summoning. A shopkeeper? All right, let's get the drunken goblin. That's amazing. Beautiful. Um, yes, it's still telling me to light up my dungeon. Probably because I have pretty dark in here. So we'll do that. Now, that's a hostile raven. And a hostile boar. We shall not stand. We shall make a team. We're going to include the priest, shaman, and all four warriors. We shall control the team. What? what I, okay, we control their activity and all this kind of stuff. We're going to control them. Time to battle. Now it is important. You can kind of use the arrow keys and like move slowly, which I kind of recommend because if you just click like this will automatically move me one, two, three, four, five turns, which if there's like an archer over here, they will get five attacks against you potentially before you even get to go. All right, we have a bridge. We have discovered what appears to be a human settlement. We've slain the pig. Knock, knock. Okay, now we've for real, oh, we've slain something. Oh, we've, we're killing goats. Knock, knock. Excellent, we are inside. Loot and pillage, my tiny green minions. Excellent, okay. Let's go back outside. The shaman has all sorts of summons. I, that is very cool, I like it. I see a bandit, okay. Ah, they're coming, they're near. Oh, that is a lot of them. Well. Goblin. What if I go to... Okay, that did not work. I wanted to control you. Hmm. Control leader? Control full. Nope. I want to... I don't want to remove you from team. I want you to use your heal on this guy. Run away. All right, now you heal. This one. Yeah, okay. Control the leader. Send the spirits in. They're kind of useless. All right, we go aggressive. They've been destroyed. The tribe of bandits. Okay, that was confusing. When I just click on them, but okay, now if I have full control mode, it's like, okay, the flashing one is who I'm controlling now. Then he goes, and then he goes. Okay, yeah, I see how, I see how it goes. I can, I can manually control them all one at a time and the flashing one is the one we did it we solved it so this was a beautiful cave of bandits um space bar we can 
We can skip our turn, which is really useful in these roguelike kind of games. <clears throat> Goblin Shaman's mood is back to normal. Well, that's great. There's all sorts of interesting things to find here. Okay, that's the edge of the map. Beautiful. Goblin Warrior is fully healed. There's a pig corpse. I love the, the hoot of the owl, too. It just definitely sounds like a dude going whoo into the microphone, which is amazing. Uh, the water is very deep. No, I, I am sh not sure. In fact, I, I don't want to go. I, I do have a swimming goblin, though, so that might do things. We're just going to fully explore around the edges of the base at this point. Hello, eyeball. Uh, we have a moose. That is not nice. Hello. Okay, the deer collapses. The effect is permanent. All right. We've solved that part. What is that? Another a deer corpse. Deer corpse. How are you today? Would you like to join my army as a skeleton? No? Okay. Ah, the great outdoors. All right, we have, I believe, successfully discovered pretty well everything there is to discover. Good venture up here. Ah, no. Okay. Then we go exit control mode. So all these things have been killed. Beautiful. It looks like the humans and the bandits have been conquered. So now we can pillage and say, uh, give me the damage mushroom. Let's just, let's just get all of it. Um, and then we can pillage the bandits and also get all of it. And now our little imps will go and scour through the corpses and bring things back to us. We will have even more power. We did hit the next level, so now we can research something. So we can get um, chickens. Plus five damage. Ooh, nice. That was a good one. So we, we, we are at our population limit, which is something that we need to uh, do. Uh, archery might be good because you may have seen in that last battle you can get kind of get bogged down with all you need is a couple of decent warriors holding down the front line and then you need to be able to get in there. So <clears throat> I'm thinking archery. Band sorcery might also be cool because then we could get more more powerful spells, which is also kind of like getting in there at range. But uh, let's do archery first. OK, and now that gives us the ability to make a bunch of short bows. Hooray. And we can also, what else can we do? Um, oh yes, we could make coffins. And that could give us undead things. Oh, but yes, I remember. Uh, archery targets. That will give us the ability to actually uh, train archery, which is, which is rather important. Um, we could just kind of put these uh, here, which is kind of hilarious. Um, for now, because the, the same person will be standing here shooting across. But we'll, we'll fix that later, potentially. Get some gallows. Um, and the thing that I did think about was this. So <clears throat> we have 472 stones. We could make a stone statue. Eventually, you can make an, an four of them. I think is the maximum you can have. And so this is going to be like our statue room. We're going to put them in the corners. Um, but the first one is here. And if you look at the installation, it says increases luxury by 0 0.3, but increases population limit by one up to four. So this is how we're going to get even more friends. And I think for now, though, we will tell this an episode. This is the video. So. Yeah, if you are into Keeper RL, it is in the 1.0. I highly recommend it. It's a super fun game. It's it's a very light sort of colony management sim 
some dungeon building there's traps and research to unlock and it's a cool little game with a clear goal of become the overlord and defeat all the enemies it definitely offers a lot of creativity in how you build your base it doesn't seem to be too picky or strict on the mechanics which is you know a pro or a con it can seem sometimes maybe like it doesn't quite matter how you lay things out and there's not too much to manage like the food is just like build a dining table you you, you did it um but uh it's still a fun game lots to do lots of cool things to check out and one of the neatest features is you can actually import other people's dungeons into your world so when somebody falls when somebody dies uh their dungeon can go into the ether and become an enemy for future players so there's almost like not quite pvp but uh you know you can play through other players uh <clears throat> dungeons which is just really cool so anyways thank you for watching if there's some interest i might continue this run uh maybe do it as a little series otherwise i will catch you in the next one